This is the Body Fuel Performance and Lifestyle Nutrition Podcast. We're here to help you navigate all things nutrition, especially for sports performance, weight loss, and healthy eating. I'm your host, Andrew Dole, registered dietitian, certified executive chef, and USA triathlon coach. Here we go. Hey, everybody. So, nutritional ketosis or a ketotic diet, Katie diet, that's what's on board for today. Um, not going to bash it. I'm just going to talk about it. I want you guys to be informed. Uh, lots of questions on the topic. A lot of Facebook videos going around by ultra runners or long distance runners, the N equals one type study. Um, not very useful. So, uh, let's talk about what N equals one is really quickly. And then I'm going to show you something cool. So, N equals one is a subject of one. Uh, that is anecdotal and completely irrelevant. So just because it worked for ultra runner buddy one doesn't mean it's going to work for anybody else. Most studies need a fair number of subjects to make sure that everything turns out okay. Um, so N equals one, those videos, I don't know, I'm gonna step back, I'm gonna show you lots of studies that have lots of subjects and provide you some real evidence-based information to wrap your head around and make an informed decision and talk to you about this diet from top to bottom, good and bad. Uh, so what's the cool thing? So check this out. The I can't adult today and tomorrow isn't looking very good either. T-shirt, I love it. My wife gets me some pretty cool shit. So let's get started with uh, what we know about nutritional ketosis is it is not the paleo diet. They are not the same. Paleo diets can have plenty of carbohydrates. Nutritional ketosis do not. They are between 20 to 60 grams of carbohydrate. Some rare individuals who are working very hard, who are very tall, or just large frame, can be up into the 100 or so, but that is the exception, not the rule. So we're talking 20 to 60 grams of all sources of carbohydrate, largely, largely fat and protein-based diet. How do you know if you're in nutritional ketosis? Your body produces ketones, and those can be measured. 0.5 to 3 millimoles is about the range of being ketosis, and those can be tested through uh, urine strips, uh, breath analyzers, and blood, blood work. You can have your blood drawn. So there are definitive ways to know whether you are in nutritional ketosis or not, and whether you're staying in it. It's not like, oh, I just happen to feel this way. Um, I guess you could tell when your breath stinks or your sweat smells funny, uh, but I prefer not to use those as methods. All right, so uh, this is a super monstrous topic as I look over to the right for my show notes to make sure that I don't get uh, sidetracked or forget a lot of important things. Um, I have tried a uh, nutritionally ketotic diet. Um, I did it about six years ago. There were some good things and there were some bad things. Uh, positive things were I swear there was less inflammation. I had less joint pain. Um, my skin was okay, I slept better, I woke up in the morning bright and vibrant, and uh, anybody who knows me knows like, hey, you don't call dull before nine, I'm not a morning person. Um, those are all kind of positive, but on the back side of that, I didn't have my blood work done before I got started, um, which was an error, an oversight. If I look back, I would certainly go get it done beforehand as baselines. But I did get it done after about three months, and it was bad. My total cholesterol was very high, my LDL was very high and my HDL was not high at all. It was kind of low. Um, those are not okay. I do subscribe to total cholesterol or some of your cardiovascular markers uh, being cholesterol and triglycerides. So I backed away. I also found that I couldn't drink and I, and I like to socially drink. Uh, my diet had to change a lot and I had to remove some things uh, that just didn't seem to work. Now, where was I in my training at that point in time? I was just do training for like a marathon, long, slow LSD type stuff. I wasn't a punchy threshold sprinty type athlete uh, doing sprint or Olympic triathlons like I am now. I don't think I would have been able to survive um, matter and keep up with the workload, to be honest. So let's go um, to who KD is for. Here we go. So who the ketogenic diet is not for? I really do not believe, and based on the evidence, uh, and there's lots of it, and I'll show you that it's for high-intensity athletes. I'm not sure it's for any professional or competitive athlete. And I do need to preface and say two different things. There is a completer and there's a competer, right? If you're going out to complete bucket list, sure, you can do it at any intensity level, and it makes no difference. Competers are usually pushing thresholds and require and demand a lot more of their body. I do not think a ketogenic diet is very beneficial. Um, mountain biking, like you can even look at like cyclocross, 
uh, mountain biking, long riding stuff, anytime where you've got big hill climbs, punchy passes, uh, race pace, um, sprints, but just trying to even get past somebody on certain stretches, you're not going to benefit from a ketogenic diet. The science is there to support that. Um, and I really don't think the diet is good for someone beyond three to six months uh, unless you have a real clinical need. Uh, so let me show you something here really quick. I'm going to make the who is it for and bring up the references. So what am I using as a reference base for my knowledge and my comments? I'm using all of these scientific journals right here. I have read them all. And if you don't believe me, I'm sorry, but uh, I have. I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a dietitian, science, sports nerd. I did a literature review two years ago for my graduate thesis and part of it was on nutritional ketosis because I thought it was a real thing um, for performance and it's not. Um, and in prep for this podcast, I actually did some other research that I've added off to the right here um, for epileptic or epilepsy and uh, nutritional interventions for ketosis where, it's, where it helps and I came away with a lot. So what am I basing my information on? Um, not necessarily N equals one. I've got a whole body of evidence that supports and I'll show you some specific study quotes. All right, so who it is for uh, short-term weight loss, 60 to 90 days? Yeah, absolutely. I think nutritional ketosis is a good way to lose some visceral fat, um, but I wanna preface any low carbohydrate weight loss program. So any of you guys out there thinking about losing weight and doing some type of diet and you're paying a lot of money. If it's a low carbohydrate diet for the first two to four or five weeks, you're gonna lose a lot of water. That's just the way it is because um, in your muscles, you've got muscle glycogen. That's the storage form of glucose. Essentially, the carbohydrates you eat get broken down into glucose. Glucose gets stored in the liver and in the muscle. The muscle glucose is stored with water, four or five parts, so it's kind of like a sponge. No carbohydrates no water bound to it, you lose a ton of water weight. And no joke, you can lose anywhere from five to 25 pounds of water, depending on how big you are. I've seen some bodybuilder guys who were 270 drop 20 pounds of water in like two and a half, three weeks. Unbelievable amounts of fluid gone. So fluid shifts can happen really rapidly. And that makes sense. That's how those diet programs can guarantee you'll lose five to 10 pounds in the first two to four weeks. Absolutely, you're losing water. The minute you eat carbohydrates, the water comes back, you gain that weight back. Um, however, with the ketotic diet, they did do in the studies, uh, they did do anthropometrics through like DEXA um, and body composition scans. So they did see visceral fat loss. And that's important to note because visceral fat is midsection fat in the belly and the upper body. And that is not good for you cardiovascularly. It actually brings on a lot of extra incurred risk. Now you can carry your weight below the hips, like in your ass, um, and your legs and your thighs and it is actually metabolically and wellness wise better for you than carrying it in the visceral area in the abdomen so losing visceral fat through the ketotic diet is a big bonus but the diet is not forever and i actually want to give you the name of the diet really quick it was called starts with a p um, pranacol Maybe, maybe not. Yes, Pronocal, P-R-O-N-O-K-A-L. It was a specific method and it's actually been commercialized, so like they're selling it, um, a diet based on nutritional ketosis, but it was very specific. It lasted 60 to 90 days. And then after the weight was lost or 80% of the goal, they went back and reverted to a Mediterranean diet. So that had carbohydrates where then it was a maintenance phase to keep it off. So again, three to six months, about all you need for weight loss. Pharmaco-resistant epilepsy, absolutely. A lot of the studies that I cite for the health risks were done on these individuals who have been on it for a long time. And in these studies, it's a very rare opportunity for nutrition uh, to have uh, not a lot of variables because I don't know, in nutrition interventions, people go home, they say, hey, you gotta eat this. Maybe they, maybe they didn't, they come back, you don't really know. But in this group of subjects, that's not the case. They really do have a dog in the fight um, for, for quality of life. Um, and it's important to them. Plus the doctors are following them very closely with blood work and tests. So um, they could benefit certainly in some cases, type two diabetics who have really bad uh, metabolic outliers and blood work. I, you know what, if you need to lose some weight, even five to 
nutritionally ketotic diet, absolutely. I would use it as an intervention. Uh, make sure that you do it controlled, you do it smart and under the uh, advice of your doctor or um, your endocrinologist because when you start to lower carbohydrates, your insulin has to change. You can't stay on the same meds. Um, bad things can happen. Um, so obese individuals, if you're looking at a long-term solution that can't be reversed like gastric bypass or sleeve, yeah, I think a ketotic diet for 60 to 90 days or even maybe six months to lose some of that weight, what a great intervention to try and see how things go, or maybe even just to lose weight to make you more uh, safe and viable for the surgery. Uh, so. I do not believe that this diet is for athletes. I'm going to pull back up the references. Most of all of these are rethinking fat as fuel by some of the world's best researchers concerning fat adaptation or high fat, very low carb or nutritional ketotic diets. And in all of them, I think all but one were two individuals, two of all of these subjects showed a benefit to their performance. So there is no science behind it. There are no elite athletes who are doing it. The Olympians aren't doing it. World-class athletes aren't doing it. I think I have a list of five. So let's talk about those five right now for those of you who are wondering who they were. LeBron James says ketotic or ketosis. I don't believe so. I think it was paleo because there was no proof or mention of any blood ketone testing. Um, gold medal triathlete Simon Whitfield. Uh, he worked with Mark Sisson, the paleo bl blueprint author. Now, I'm going to guess they were paleo. I haven't reached out and gotten a hold of Mark Sisson to find out if they did do ketone testing to make sure he was ketotic or not. But again, there is no proof that he was. So I'm guessing it was a, a low carb, not a ketotic diet. That's very different. Ultra marathoner Timothy Olsen and professional cyclist uh, Dave Zabriskie. Both of them, no mention of testing whatsoever. And there was actually note of uh, how many carbohydrates Dave Zabriskie, the cyclist, was 124 grams. Cyclists aren't known for being very big in stature. Um, I can't imagine 124 grams of carbohydrate kept him in ketosis, but I don't have proof that he wasn't, but I also don't have proof that he was. So there's one, two, three, there are four, four athletes that say maybe they were nutritionally ketotic and competed at a high level maybe. So if you're a competitor, I still don't think it's for you. I don't think it's for high intensity athletes. I really don't. I'm not sure it's for anybody long term because of the health risks, which we need to get into right now. So the health risks, the mild health risks, one and two halitosis, the bad breath and the sweet, fruity smelling sweat, that's not going to go away simply because your body is producing the ketones. That is a lifelong thing for as long as you're on this diet, which hopefully isn't for very long. Constipation, uh, that seems to have resolved around four months. I don't know if you can go four months and be constipated. That's kind of hard to compete and have a real good performance. So again, we're going to take a look at this from two perspectives, like why be on this diet if it's performance? For performance, yeah, I don't know. Being constipated is going to take a hit, right? I don't know if I'm going to get any faster when I can't train because I'm full of poop um, or I just feel terrible. And then there's weight loss. Um, so constipation is issue. It may have resolved after four months, um, which is what a lot of the studies showed. Headache, nausea, and lack of energy, four through six. That's so associated with the keto flu, the low carb flu, where you feel terrible for two to four weeks. That is a given. Um, if you are already on a low carbohydrate diet and you transition into ketosis, I do believe those effects are somewhat lessened. I didn't really notice it, but I wasn't eating a ton of carbs at that time anyway. So those are mild adverse effects, um, which brings up the how long am I going to do this? The longer you do it, the more risks you have for long-term major effects. Uh, organ damage, fatty liver disease, gallstones, uh, bone density, because as the kidneys start to react differently um, with the sodium, potassium, there's like a bunch of supplements that you need to take uh, while you're on a ketotic diet. Uh, internationally speaking, I think those were um, magnesium, uh, omega-3s, sodium, potassium, um, and calcium were all supplements that were recommended, especially, and they're all being given to individuals clinically who are on this diet. Um, so I don't think I would avoid them. Uh, 
Arterial stiffness is a big one. Uh, let's talk about that. So arterial stiffness is a hardening of the arteries, so they're not as pliable. As they begin to harden, um, the blood pressure starts to increase. Hypertension, that's bad. That's a precursor to cardiovascular disease. There is no arguing that. You may argue saturated fat and cholesterol, but you cannot argue the stiffening of the arteries is a precursor to cardiovascular disease. There was a study that actually showed individuals who were on the ketotic diet had arterial stiffening compared to those who were not. Uh, let me show you some study quotes really quickly. So here we go. Um, Long-term ketogenic di uh, diets, uh, parenchymal, that's organ injury, uh, fatty liver, hep hepatic steatosis, gallstone formation. So patients should be monitored. Is your ultra N equals one buddy who's on this being monitored? Probably not. Would you want to be on it for a long time? I don't know. Probably not, especially if you're not losing weight. Um, not a benign therapy um, and is associated with side effects like uh, metabolic, gastrointestinal, and renal function disturbances. Yeah, so they're getting tested to make sure that everything is functioning appropriately after a long period of time. In fact, clinically, people are getting tested before they even get started to make sure they're viable. Um, N equals one ultra runner buddy probably didn't do any of this. Um, and then this last study here was the uh, patients where they compared and arterial stiffness increased in children and young adults treated with the KD diet. And we know that was a precursor to, to cardiovascular disease. Not a good thing. So you might want to rethink about how long you should be on this diet. All right, so let me go to uh, the fad versus clinical versions of these diets because they are different. Um, the fad diet version, N equals one ultra runner buddy. Oh, I eat cream and bacon and butter and I never got my blood work done and I feel fantastic. Um, no ketone testing. I just think I'm in it. Um, and I eat a bunch of high saturated fats because I don't believe it's going to kill me. Okay, no problem. But I just showed you a bunch of studies and tons of journals that said, yeah, it does matter. For those individuals who are getting tested, who are being followed, who are getting the appropriate monitoring done, these risks are occurring. Not on everyone, but it's a risk. And those are small subject populations. Now you start doing nutritional ketosis because somebody watched Facebook and you get 3,000 people doing it from one video, all of a sudden the side effects are gonna be amplified and a lot more people are gonna get it. So you might just wanna think twice or at least be educated about what you're getting into. The clinical version of the diets. You're getting blood work done before. Are you even viable? Are your liver enzymes, is your liver, um, is your kidneys, are, are they okay? Bone density, uh, how is your uh, HDL, LDL, triglyceride, your blood serum, uh, your blood lipids, uh, getting ketone tested often, making sure they're staying in the zone so they're not just popping in and out all the time. I'm not sure we truly know what the risk is of coming in and out at a whim, like, hey, I wanna go eat donuts and drink a bunch of alcohol today and I'm gonna pop out. Oh, but I can get back in really easy. Well, was that good for you? Is that something you should be doing? We don't know. Um, clinical version weight loss was 60 to 90 days. The longer versions for the years, up to six years, those were epileptic patients, man. They had a real dog on the fight for quality of life and they weren't joking around. They were being pretty strict and they were getting monitored consistently. Um, so, and there's a little note, not gonna argue saturated fat. I, I'm not convinced saturated fat specifically is a precursor to cardiovascular disease, but that's not what I was talking about. If we go back to the study, and the study quotes, arterial stiffness increased in children and young adults treated with ketogenic diet. Okay, young adults, we're already older and our vascular system is already sort of getting old and aging and hardening. I'm pretty sure I don't wanna take that risk as a 41 plus 50 year old guy. Maybe you might wanna think about it. All right, so where do we go with this one? Um, who it's not for, again, I don't think it's for anybody long-term. Uh, you really want to pay attention to uh, why you're doing it. Is it targeted? How you're doing it? Did you get tested beforehand? Um, there are a few other things to talk about that are reverting back. Oh, yes, absolutely. The supplementation. So when you're on a ketotic diet, if you decide to do it, please uh, get your primary care involved. Get some blood work done early on. 
Uh, make sure you're taking the appropriate supplementation, which is the calcium, uh, sodium, magnesium, uh, potassium, and omega-3 fatty acids. Um, in the ketogenic diets, they actually did lower HDL levels. They didn't actually bring them up. Um, so the omega-3s would uh, help with that. Now, where there was some positive change in that one study uh, with the hardening of the arteries, they did do an, a follow-up study, or there was another study done where they used um, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated like olive oil type fats. And let me pull up that screen for you, who it's for. Um, it is fad versus clinical. And we talked about the cream, butter, bacon, all the saturated fat, red meats. Um, not so much. The olive oil based new studies had a better outcome for those cardiovascular markers. Uh, so if you're going to do a, a ketogenic diet, maybe don't do it ultra runner buddy n equals one study and eat all of this saturated stuff. Maybe you should go on a more polyunsaturated monounsaturated version still getting blood work done before you start probably after about three months to make sure things are not are going okay. Tell your doctor what your primary care what's happening. So liver enzymes, kidney function, those types of things are being watched um, and 60 to 90 days for fat loss totally within the realm of reason uh, of something that you could do for visceral fat that we talked about. So who is it for? I don't know. Not very many people. And if you're looking for performance benefits, I don't think you're going to get it. Um, as far as the lower inflammation, the better skin, the sleeping better, those studies are kind of cool. But is it worth the risk? And is there maybe some balance? Maybe is there something that's not quite ketogenic, but it's lower carb? Potentially. Don't have the answers to that one. Um, enjoyed putting all of this together for you. I look forward to doing more. You can see uh, me on Facebook, uh, Body Fuel Multisport. Uh, there's Body Fuel Sports Performance, SPN. And you can email me at adole at bodyfuelspn.com. I'm super open to talking about all these different things or getting new topics. If you have something you want to talk about or me to research and do a podcast about, Hey, jump out there. I'd love to do it. Anyway, I am uh, done adulting for today. I'm going to go run and grab a beer. I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, signing out until later. Bye-bye.